Oh, so we covered quite a bit in this episode and I just wanted to take a moment to to just sort of tell you a little bit about my story. You know, some of you might be wondering, you know, who is this guy? Why should I listen to him in the first place? And you know, that's a good question. Why should you? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of my background um, and how I got into programming and how I basically fell in love with the Quasar framework. So I started... Um, I started coding probably about five or six years ago, not that long ago, really, in the grand scheme of things. I was actually studying to be a classical pianist, and I thought that's what I wanted to do with my life. I thought I wanted to play piano for the rest of my life. Um, in fact, I remember when I first um, went to my piano audition, I wasn't very good yet, and I couldn't believe that I actually got into the course. And I remember in my very first lesson, my piano teacher actually said to me, I can't believe that you got in you're definitely the worst pianist here by far. So, you know, that obviously doesn't make you feel very good about yourself. Um, in fact, it made me feel quite crappy, to be honest. And I remember going to watch other people play and thinking, wow, they're so talented. Um, how can they move their fingers so fast? And how, do they, how are they so accurate all the time? It just basically boggled my mind. So anyway, I was a pianist back then and... I remember practicing like crazy because I just had this vision in my mind of what I wanted to be. I wanted to be able to play certain pieces on the piano. And so I went crazy and I, went, I started learning about the art of learning, how to learn, different tactics um, for learning things quickly, but then also for learning things thoroughly, the art of revision, all that kind of thing. And so as I went deeper and deeper into that, I started to get better and better. I ended up ditching that piano teacher and... um taking on another one later on, who was fantastic, by the way. And yeah, he taught me a lot about the art of learning and how to break things down into smaller pieces. So I ended up topping the year in my final recital. So I went from being the worst pianist. Um, a concert pianist actually told me this. A professional pianist said that you are the worst person here. And I went from that to being able to, um, to yeah, topping my recital, topping the year for my recital. And the reason I tell you this isn't to be like, look at how amazing I am. Wow, I'm <clears throat> sorry, I got something in my throat. Wow, I'm so talented. Honestly, it's kind of the opposite. It really, it really annoys me when people don't believe that they have it in them to do something. I honestly believe the only reason that I was able to get as far as I did with piano was simply because I persisted at it over and over and over again. And I kept trying different things and I kept pushing the limits of what I knew about practicing the piano. So rather than just repeating things over and over again, it was like, how do I practice this? How do I do it in such a way that it sticks, that I learn it quickly? And so I became very, very obsessed with just learning in general. And I remember I learned like over a thousand digits of pi, which is actually really easy when you know how to using like mnemonic devices. And yeah, so I became obsessed with learning and I went, I came, became, went from this person who, frankly, I think I'm naturally not very intelligent. And I went from that person to someone who is now teaching other people how to code. And, uh, you know, I went on to be a piano teacher and help other people to um, get good at piano as well. And it's just like, it's become a bit of a mission of mine. How do I prove to people that they really can learn anything? How do I prove to them that all you need to do is know the steps to take, how to break things down into their smaller pieces and how to execute on that every single day so that you just get a little bit better every single day, every single time. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how I got into coding because I then wanted to build a website that taught kids music theory and oral. Um, and in order to do that, I needed to learn how to code. And I kind of thought, well, if I taught myself how to play piano from the ground up, you know, most people learned when they were um, six years old and I learned a lot later in life. If I can do that and I am not a particularly smart person, surely I can apply those things to coding as well. And so, you know, I remember learning jQuery. Um, I, I messed around with Cake PHP and like these awful backend frameworks and then discovered Laravel, which I fell in love with. And um, yeah, and then started playing around with those different frameworks. But what I came to realize is that one thing I hated about coding one thing I really hated about coding was CSS. It's so boring. I like, sorry, this is just me personally. I know some people love playing with CSS and styling. And it's like, I discovered the material design thing and I thought, 
these guys have already figured out how to build a website in and how to do a UI that works well and is beautiful. You know, I showcase some of the websites today. They're stunning. And a lot of that is due to their own skills. It's a lot of it's due to material design. And so I started looking at, you know, material design frameworks and then eventually came across Quasar. And I was, it was almost like love at first sight. Not only could I build a web, an SPA that was fast, tree, sh tree shaken really well, beautiful, easy to build super quickly, every component I could possibly need. Also templates for all of those components, slots, um, attributes that allow me to extend it in every single way I could ever think of. I just fell in love with Quasar. And that's why I, that's why I'm here today. That's why I did this show today. And I hope that you enjoyed it and got a bit out of it. I'm going to get better. Um, you know, this is what I do. I release something that's maybe not so good to begin with. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, but then get better and better and better every time. So I guarantee you in a few months time, this show is going to be um, fantastic. Um, not because I'm talented, simply because I know that if you keep at something and you constantly push to just be a little bit better every time, that um, you really can do anything. So yeah, that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm starting up um, the Quasar News podcast. That's why I'm doing the Quasar cast. If you haven't already, go to quasarcast.com slash register and register your account there. The reason I'm doing all of this is because eventually I want to charge for my videos. There will be free videos and paid ones. Um, but I want to get money for this so that I can funnel it back into the Quasar community. Can you imagine if we could free up a little bit more time for the Quasar developers so that they could rather than spend, you know, imagine if rather than spending, I don't know, eight hours, four hours, three hours a day, depending on who they are and what they're doing for work in the core team. Imagine if we had some full-time people working on Quasar. I mean, the, you need to understand that the, the depth of this framework is insane. It is insane. It's I can't I can't find anything like it on the internet, even for paid frameworks. You know, you've got stuff like Ionic. I don't think that it's anywhere as beautiful as something like the Quasar framework. There are things that are paid for that have full-time people working on it. So uh, go to quasarcast.com slash register. And when I start putting up a paywall, um, subscribe. I'm going to create some content that I really think that you will love and it's going to help to build this community bigger. And until we free up more people in the Quasar community, I'm actually going to funnel every cent that I make through that through to Quasar. And I want to finish off here by basically saying, please, if you have the means, donate to the Quasar framework. I remember when I was a kid, my mum would always tell me to... Um, to put the clothes on the line or take the clothes off the line, sorry, because it was going to rain that afternoon. And I'd say, yeah, mom, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And the truth is it never happened. This happened over and over again in my life. And it wasn't until later on that I realized that if I want to become a certain person, then I need to dedicate to the action it takes to become that person. I want to be the kind of person that supports open source. If you want to be the kind of person that supports open source, I encourage you to start donating to today, even if it is the lowest donation that you can possibly afford. Everybody's got at least five cents or 20 cents, 30 cents. Get into the habit of donating. Become a person who donates and then gradually increase that amount over time as you become more fortunate in life. And also talk to whoever you work for and let them know that um, your company is leveraging off of hundreds of thousands of hours of work and that um, it would be great if they could donate to the Quasar framework. So thank you so much for watching. I've really enjoyed myself. I've really enjoyed doing these videos and also doing my Quasar cost videos as well. So go to quasarcast.com slash register, um, donate to Quasar, and I'll see you in the future.